Good evening. Welcome to all of you members and visitors alike. Um, some announcements for you, a lot going on live at the congregation. Let me just say too, I know that, um, and we've had some conversations as uh, we were preparing for worship, but um, you know, there may be a potential that we will be shutting down, I don't know, but um, please just keep that in mind and if, if it happens, uh, it's for the safety and well-being of all. And, uh, you know, there are some other churches that have already shut down and uh, judicatories and denominational heads that... So we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, church council meets Tuesday this week. So um, just keep that in mind. We'll try to get the word out and so forth. Um, also, if you have an email address and you don't get the emails from the church, um, please make sure that we have your email address, okay? So please keep that in mind. Lots of things. I missed you all last week, but I celebrated a wedding with Catherine and Henry, and uh, it was a great evening, and um, we celebrated, indeed, uh, God's grace and God's love and their relationship for each other, so... Um, and I know Father Larry probably took good care of y'all, so that's great. A few things going on this week on Wednesday. Uh, leave the lights on. We'll be gathering food right out here in the entryway, okay? And all you have to do is drive up and somebody will unload food. I know they need things like soup, maybe like tuna. Those are some of the items that I've heard that they particularly need, so... Um, please keep that in mind. Uh, this is the last Wednesday night before we break for the holidays for our children and youth ministries. Um, so I lift that up to you. Um, and tomorrow night, please pray for Emily and I. We're taking about 14 senior high youth over to Botanica. So, no, they're great. And we're looking forward to doing that with them. Kind of a conclusion to our fall programming. Uh, Martha's Circle, if there's members in the Martha Circle, they have canceled their November 19th meeting. Uh, we encourage you to be safe as you leave worship today. Please social distance. We do um, practice communion in one kind, uh, bread only, during this um, pandemic. So I just lift that up to you as well. Tomorrow we're go going to be uh, distributing TFAP commodities the Junior League um, uh, packed last night and a few other adults. So we had a good time doing that and uh, trying to keep up with the kids. So uh, please keep uh, our social ministries in your prayers. I think that's all the announcements I have. Jan Gaber, we'd like to say a word of appreciation to you for playing tonight. Why don't you give her a round of applause? That's all that I have. I'm going to invite you to stand. The order of worship is printed in your bulletin. I'll read the lighter type. I ask you as God's people to respond with the bold type. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You are the treasured people of the Lord. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. One does not live by bread alone. The Lord be with you. Let us join our hearts together in a word of prayer. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its people, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The readings for today are printed in 
Your bulletin, the first of the readings, comes from the book of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter, and the warrior cries aloud there. The day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon the people that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night when they say there is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. 
His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seeds. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, you may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you in peace. From God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we all want happiness. We all want joy. The problem is, where do we find it? Do we find those things in accumulating wealth? Do we find those things in possessions? Power? Positions in this world? No, we don't. But it seems like we are very good at looking for happiness and joy in all the wrong places. We look for eternal happiness and joy in the things of this world. And the truth is that eternal happiness and joy is found in a relationship with God and how we live within God's grace and God's love. The church year is coming to a close, if you didn't know it. It always begins in the season of Advent, and it always ends on the weekend of Christ the King. So this is the second to last weekend in the church year. Next weekend is Christ the King. The scripture readings, and in particular the gospel text, for these last Sundays and weekends in the church year, always focus on apocalyptic messages, end time messages, the return of Christ. They are powerful messages with all kinds of imagery. Today's gospel text is a parable. It's a parable that probably is misnamed. 
It's called the parable of the talents. But I would like to suggest to you that really it should be a parable that's named about the master. This is an incredible master. He's going on a long trip. And he summons three slaves to him. And he knows the ability of each of those slaves or servants. And what he does is he takes his wealth, his, his property, and assigns to each of the slaves, each of the servants, a portion of his wealth and poverty as they have the ability. So one gets five talents, one gets two, another one gets one. And the master departs. Leaving these three to manage his wealth and his property. If you're a golf fan, you know that this weekend in this weird year of COVID is the PGA Masters at Augusta. I got my sports illustrated the other day and on the cover was Bryson DeChambro. He's the most recent hottest golfer that is on the circuit. He's rebuilt himself. He's changed what he eats. He lifts weights like no other golfer. He practices like no other golfer. He can hit the ball a mile. And he was the odds maker's favorites to win the Masters. Obviously, Sports Illustrated put a lot of stock in the fact that they believed Bryson would win it in the Masters. But there's a thing called the curse of Sports Illustrated, and it seems to have struck Bryson. He barely made the cut this morning at about 7 o'clock Eastern time as he finished up his second round, and he's far back in the pack. You know, we put a lot of stock in heroes, sports figures, celebrities. It's kind of interesting to me that on this weekend where a text talks about a master going on a journey, the PGA is having the masters. So what does this text have to say to us? It seeks to redefine what's important to us, reshape what we hold as valued in our world and in our lives. There's a chorus line that appears throughout tonight's gospel text. Enter into the joy of your master. Living as God's people, you and I are invited to become stewards of what God has entrusted to us. You see, Jesus died and then he rose and then he ascended into heaven. And we know that one day Jesus will return. The question is, how will he find us as his servants, as his disciples? What have we 
done with what he has put us in charge of and responsible for. So, after a long journey, the master comes home in today's parable. He comes home and he calls his slaves to make an accounting of what they've done. The one with the five talents, and that's probably why he got five talents, did pretty good with his investments, and got five more. The one with two talents also did fairly well, and got two more talents. But there was one who had one talent. And he took it out the backyard and he buried it because he was afraid. Not only did he bury his talent, but he buried himself. We are called not to be a people of fear. We are called to invest ourselves in God's kingdom and God's reign. And what we do is we value what God in Christ has entrusted to us. Most of all, his love and grace. It's just not for us. It's for the whole world. That's why we boxed commodities last night with junior high kids. And that's why tomorrow, as the weather begins to change, we'll have a line that stretches from Dillon Living Center all the way out to Target. People, your neighbors, needing some help. And we, as God's people, are called to live out our faith and daily life. Jesus will return one day. And he will find us hopefully faithful, not fearful. He will find us living within his grace and love, the world different than when he left. We are bearing the good news of Christ in the midst of struggles and pain difficult days and darkness. Nothing easy about being God's people. But the return and the joy and the happiness is that when Jesus comes back, he will look at us and say, enter into the joy of your master. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, may that peace keep your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
invite you to stand in your bulletin is the response to the word, the creed, and the confession. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. You believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there he is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice in your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The offering plate is at the door, but there's much more to what we offer God, ourselves, our time, our very being. We return it to the God that has given us all things. Let us pray. God, our creator. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As God's people called to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. Lord of the Church, ignite your people with the passion of your love and grace. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us with others. Refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of all needs, search out those who are in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, COVID, and all sickness. Sustain the weary, give hope to those for whom hope seems far away. And especially do we pray tonight for your people, Connie Watkins, Jerry Schell, Bobby Schrag, Paula Schrag, Anna Crockford, Nancy McConnell, Marion Lundquist, George Rice, Pam Lagasse, Gail Doherty, Mike Crow, Hayden Cook, Justin Ray, Becky Royce, Elizaia Johnson, Kaylee Keeler, Ruth Porish, Diane Owens, John Ernst, Dennis Schwartz, Saj Khan, Joel Clausen, Chris Savoya, James Harris, Amanda, and all those who we name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the stranger, help us to extend welcome to all people. Those who 
Live on the margins, O oh Lord. Let us open, indeed, our hearts and our lives to serve all people in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated at this time. May the Lord bless you and keep you in his care. Amen. Mm -hmm. 